Hello again. Um, we're going to look at Booster Link. IK Booster Link. Uh, this is a very nice, very simple little tool, but at the same time very powerful. Quite like the whole of IK Boost itself. It's it's very simple but powerful. But there's a little bit of a hurdle to get over it in the first place and to get understanding it for the first time. Well, there definitely was for me anyway. So it there's possibility that I'm not going to be the only person who who struggles to come to terms with it first off but as soon as you get it you, it'll be no problem it, it's it's easy when you know how it'll be dead easy no problems at all so uh, I'm gonna try and set up a really basic example just to understand just just to show the very basics of it and then I'll, I'll spend a bit of time on this too and then in another video again I'll show some more advanced applications of it but I'm gonna try and concentrate on the basics first um, uh, to set up a scene, I'm just going to model up a couple of objects here in two different layers. It's going to be just a ball and a box. Something like that will do. Yeah, that's fine like that. I hope, I think. That should be okay. Let me save that. Say booster link. Okay, and save and switch to layout. So I'll add those objects. The plus key, and there we go. They're in layout. Um, the first thing I want to do is apply IK booster to both of these objects. So Control B, and right click where you see that little golden cross shape. And apply IK booster. That's gone onto the sphere, and I do it for the the block as well. Okay, now I'm going to set up a little scene here. Um, that when I move, say the the block, the ball will automatically say, "Okay, I want to move as well," based on your movements. Um, I think the best thing here to do is is simply just to to get moving and when you see it in action it's a little it'll be much simpler to understand. So in IK booster mode um, you can see these are gone to the move nodes, the square ones as opposed to the ones you might be familiar with which would be the round ones like that. These defaulted to the move because they're the top of a hierarchy and the type of a hierarchy is always a move node unless you change it of course so you have a choice. So I'm going to move the ball out of the way slightly here by dragging on the Z channel and that'll move well, move the rectangle, okay. Now, what I want to do here is, as the rectangle moves towards, or as the block moves towards the ball, I want the ball to move up and out of the way, and uh, somewhere around that point. And as the block goes further down, the ball will go back to its original position. So I reset that block there, put it back over there, and I'm not going to move it on the X and the Y, So I'll just lock those channels, as I've seen before. And with the ball, I'm only going to move this on the Y. So I'm going to lock off the X and the Z. You don't have to do this, but um, the advantage of doing this is I can just click and drag on the node now to move and be locked on, on that axis. If I have these unlocked, I get movement all over the place. That's the only reason I'm doing that at the moment. Okay, now what I want to do is tell the ball to move in the Y channel as the block moves in the Z channel. And it's very simple, we just right click on the Y channel and we get a new option uh, menu here. And at the second last item on this menu is called Add Link. Well, what's it adding a link to? Well, the way IK Booster always works for these kind of menus when you, when you want to add a link to something. It always works to the previously selected item in IK Booster. The previously selected item is highlighted by a little, little horizontal tick. Sometimes it's gold, sometimes it's it's cyan like this. Um, in this case, it's cyan, and you can see that the block was a previously selected item. Now, if I select the block, you can see the sphere was the previously selected item. So I'm going to right-click on the Y channel and say add link and it's going to add a link to the previous item which is the block 
and you can see a, li a line is drawn on screen. Now at the end of that line you can see another Y, that means it's linked to the Y channel. IQ Booster de defaults automatically by linking the same nominated channel on both objects. But if I didn't want it on the Y, I actually want it on the Z if you remember, I wanted to link to the Z. I just right click on the link where, the, where link is written in text, go to change channel and choose Z. As you can see we can choose scale, translation and rotation channels. In this case I want to choose Z. Now it has applied itself here and it's jumped jumped out of the way. This happens because um, IQ Booster is, is linking full values now. Um, it's it's not even worth talking about because it's it's useless. It doesn't have any good effect for us at the moment. It, it, you can't really control it. it. In some cases, it will be useful, but in general, we'll we'll never use it. I'm just going to temporarily remove this remove this link and reset everything back. What I need to do first before I link a channel is set some limits on that channel. So we decide which is the driver and which is driven. You might have heard of this concept before. If you haven't, don't worry about it. It'll become fairly obvious. Um, this is why I say, if you're new to Lightwave and new to animation, you'll see that this tool is very, very powerful. And it, it performs the actions of a lot of older tools that used to be in, or, well, or still are in Lightwave. But it consolidates a lot of those actions. So if you're new to Lightwave and you're new to animation, it's worth getting to understand this tool very, very well because it will perform a lot of function for you. It'll, it'll, it'll cross a lot of bridges for you at once without having to learn a whole selection of tools. And then you can add to your tool set, of course, after that. But if you get this one down first, you get you get a lot of power with one very simple concept. So I'll go back now and I'm going to do something here. I'm going to right click on what's called the driver because I want the block to drive as it moves down, I want I want the ball to be driven. So the block is telling the ball to do what to do as opposed to the ball telling the block what to do. So it's the driver and this is driven. Um I I use those terms because they're 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 common across a lot of three D applications. And IK Boost we don't we don't really have a driver and driven, it's just a link. But anyway, but the first thing we need to do here to make this really predictable and do what we wanted to do is we need to set limits on that channel, the Z channel, or if whatever channel it will be. So I'm going to right click on the Z channel and say set a limit. Now you can see immediately there's a line drawn on the screen, and this is the limits of our Z channel. As you see, I'm dragging there, it stops at the end of the channels, it won't go any further. So that's the limits. You could right click again on the Z and edit the limit. And you can see it's gone from minus seven point four three blah 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 to eight point so there are the limits. If you want to edit those limits, you can type them in there or you can hold down the control key and drag on the Z channel and the further you drag out, the longer the line will get. So you can see. So now the limits are, are bigger obviously. If I right click again and edit the limit, you can see these numbers are larger and smaller. You can also reset those limits. Now I have no limits at all, it's, it's stuck where it is, so I hold, a, I hold control and drag and it's increase those limits again. Probably gone too far, so I'll just do that. I don't want to use too much screen so we can see what's happening here. So there's my limits now. I'll increase that a little bit down that way. And this makes I, it, everything I, easier for IQ Booster to, to read. So if I set, set up my link again from the Z channel, or from the, from the Y to the Z, so I'll add a link by right clicking on the Y, and I change the link channel to the Z. You can see it didn't jump, jump that time, that's because limits are set. And now it's waiting for a further input. And it, it, it compares those limits. So what I'm going to do here is, if you look down here in the numeric readout, the, the, the value here on the Z 
as I drag it changes. At this end of the line it's 4.619 and at this end of the line it's minus 5.766. So the minus, the negative number is obviously the minimum value and the 4.619 is obviously the maximum value. So if I go down to the minimum value and I say, I'll say to IK Boost, when the block is at its minimum value, where do I want the ball? Well, I want it right here. That's fine. Okay. When the block is at its medium value, let's drag that around so we're close to zero. Where do I want the ball? I'm going to drag on the Y channel here. I want the ball up, in the, up, up high. Okay. And when the block is at its maximum value, where do I want the ball? I want it back down. So now as I move my block on Z, you can see it's automatically moving the ball up and down. Now remember I haven't done anything in the time frame here. There's nothing happening in time. This is an automatic relationship, an automatic link, obviously, that's happening between the ball and the block. So one has been to it's been told what to do by the other. And you can set that's the most basic, basic operation. And you can set that up into more complex and complex hierarchies and have it working with other plugins and, and modifiers and actions and channels and scales. That's the most basic operation. I, I, I'll just quickly show it in uh, working on another channel as well. Say I want to. Uh, <coughs> Let's say we want the ball to rotate. You probably won't see it very well, but we'll, we'll show that anyway. I change this node. Excuse me, I seem to have done something strange. <laughs> Options, move, rotate. It's got a T on it, which indicates a target. Oh, reset IK target, yeah. Okay, so say I want to link um, what one should be obvious here, the pitch channel to this object. Is it linked? I don't know what I've linked. I've moved that link again. Previously selected add link. Now it's linked to the pitch channel of this. Well, I don't want it linked to the pitch channel of that. I want it linked to the Z channel again. So now we should see, we can set some rotations for the ball. Say just at the end we want it rotated. 360 degrees. Or minus 360 degrees. So now, and, uh, and at the start I should have, or at the minimum it's at 360 and at the end it's at zero okay so now as I click and drag on the ball or on the block you can see the ball is getting rotated as well just about I hope you can see that when I encode this you, again you can link to things like channels like scale as well but we did that in another video this is this is the most basic way to set things up anyway so as I said, that nothing is happening over time there, but we can we can animate that over time. Say we go to frame 20 here, drag that over there. Now we can drag in a time slider, and the animation is done. If we open up the graph editor, we can change the timing of, or the, the timing of that animation as well.